was 1994. I was doing my internship at Selingan Island, one of the Turtle Island in Sabah. It was the first time I saw sea turtles laying her eggs. She was huge and beautiful. Then I saw she shed some tears. It was a sad look. It broke my heart. So I asked the wildlife ranger. He replied, she's crying because people collect her eggs. That night, I told myself that I will protect and save sea turtles from human exploitation. That turtle tears, that turtle tears changed me and made me the person I am today. This is the picture of green turtle. Something wrong with him. Sorry about that. This is the picture of a green turtle. It is endangered. And this is the most abundant species that we have here in Malaysia. Um, it is endangered, meaning that if we don't protect them, they will soon be gone on our ocean. And actually, sea turtle, they cry, not because they are sad, but simply they need to get rid of excess salt in their body. So sea turtles, they are ancient reptiles. They have been in the planet for over 65 million years. And they have been playing an important role to maintain the health of our ocean. So sea turtles, they maintain productive seagrass meadow. They maintain productive coral reefs ecosystem. They also transport nutrients from the oceans to the nesting beaches. And because sea turtles, they conduct long distance migration and took decades to mature. Sea turtles are the main indicator for the health of the coastal and marine environment. There are seven sea turtles that roam the ocean today. And we are very fortunate, four of the species recorded to nest in Malaysia. The first one, we have the green turtle, the most abundant species. It is endangered with nesting about 20,000 to 30,000 per year. But bear in mind, when I say 20,000 to 30,000 nesting, it doesn't mean that we have 30,000 individual green turtles. Because turtles, they lay eggs average five times in one breeding season, so we have to divide the nesting number with five. So basically, at the moment, we have about 4,000 to 6,000 individual green turtle in our waters. That is a very small number. And next, we have the hawksbill turtle. It is, it is critical and critically endangered species. And at the moment, we have nesting about 600 to 800 nests per year. And we have the olive ridley. Sadly, it is in the brink of extinction with total nestings less than 10, nests, uh, 10 per year. And we used to have the giant leatherback. This is the biggest species of sea turtles. Unfortunately, it is already extinct in Malaysia. So, what had happened to the Malaysian leatherback turtles? What went wrong? So back in the 1950s, about 10,000 nesting of leatherback recorded at Rantau Abang in Terengganu, Malaysia. And by 2000, the nesting declined to only less than 20 nests per year. By 2010, we have the last nesting of the giant leatherback, and we do not have any nestings ever since. So what went wrong? Back in the 1950s, when the government started the conservation of leatherback turtles, 
only 10% of the eggs were incubated, were conserved, whereas 90% of the turtle eggs were sold in the market and being eaten. And um, of course, 25 years after that, we found that those hatchlings from that 10% egg, eggs, it was not enough to replenish future stocks of sea turtles. And during breeding migrations, it was reported that most of our leatherback was also entangled or drowned in fishing net. And at that time, back in 1950s, 1960s, we do not have any information about sea turtles, not only in Malaysia, but globally. In fact, the population of leatherback in Rantau Abang, it was the first known leatherback population in the world. So when they started the conservation, they don't have enough information, so they just do what they think right at that time. So for example, all the, the leatherback, leatherback eggs were transferred into a beach, open beach hatcheries. At that time, we didn't know that temperature are planning uh, are playing an important role in determining the sex of sea turtles. So what happened? We produce 100% female hatchlings. So by the year 2000, none of the eggs that being transferred into the beach hatchery hatch. Because why? We didn't have enough male population in the leatherback turtles, and all the eggs were not fertilized. So because of this, Sadly, we lost the giant leatherbacks in Malaysia. And let me introduce you a little bit about myself. I'm a sea turtle biologist. I spent my, my career, the last two decades of my career, in Terengganu. And recently, I came back to my hometown, Kota Kinabalu, and I joined UMS. For the last two decades, I dedicated my life to save sea turtles. It was very challenging at the, when we started it. And um, the first research we initiated, it was actually to help save the giant leatherbacks in Malaysia. However, it was too late to save the giant leatherbacks. And because of that, my team, we decided and we began a long-term sea turtle research, conservation, and outreach program in Redang Island. And we studied all aspects of the biology and ecology of sea turtles, threats to their survival, and we also managed, in order to restore all these various species, to a stable population level. We studied the temperature dependent sex determination. As we know now that higher temperature will produce female, hot stuff here, and cooler temperature will produce male hatchlings. So we went to all the beach hatcheries in Malaysia and we found out that 100% of these beach hatcheries are producing female hatchlings. So through these studies, we recommended beach hatcheries to be partially shaded so that we can have balanced sex ratio in the turtle populations. And we also did satellite tracking. This is to track the migration of sea turtles after they finish laying their eggs. And this is the example of the studies that we did in Redang Island. We attach satellite tags on green turtles, and after the breeding season, we found that these turtles will conduct long breeding migrations, and they will go to their respective foraging ground. And from this study, we extended our studies, our research, from nesting grounds to the foraging grounds. At the moment, we had identified all the major foraging grounds in Malaysia. And after that, we started with genetic studies. 
where we, where we go to nesting beaches and we identified all the, uh, all the management units of uh, turtles in Malaysia. And we also go to foraging ground, took samples of the mixed stock turtles at the foraging grounds, and this is to determine their natal origin. For turtles, they don't just simply nest in, in beaches, but they will go back to the natal beach, meaning that they will only lay eggs on the beach where they were born. And basically, over the last two decades, we have studied most about the turtles on the nesting beaches. Then um, we expanded our study to foraging grounds, and we did about 30% research in the foraging ground. However, until this moment, we don't know what happened to the hatchlings once they swim and reach the open oceans. So scientists call this the lost years. So at the moment, we don't know about our hatchlings when they were in the open ocean. And all these important results from our studies, it became the basis recommendations, important rec recommendations for relevant governments in Malaysia. And for the last two decades, we can see positive conservation of sea turtles in Malaysia. Well, various conservation efforts has been done in Malaysia, intensive research, but we are still losing our turtles. Sea turtles, they have struggled to survive because of exploitation and threats caused by us, human. This is a very sad picture for me. A friend from WWF sent this to me. And during low tide in an island in Semporna, Boom Boom Island, you can see turtle carcasses everywhere, hundreds of them. This is the evidence of poaching activity uh, going on in this area. And poachers, they will hunt and kill turtles for their meat. And this is one of the examples, the biggest poaching incidents in Malaysia back in 2007 in Mantanani, where marine police found about 314 turtles inside a foreign fishing vessels. And out of this, they found 288 turtles died. And as you can see now, this is one of the turtles, the 288 turtles that being poached in Mantanani. This is a juvenile green turtle, age maybe five to 10 years old. We couldn't determine the sex at this age. And yeah, we're very sad this turtle didn't make it to come back to the natal beach and lay their eggs. So this is the major problem that we're facing now. It become more rampant and serious. And another threat for sea turtles in Malaysia, eating turtle eggs. Even in this modern generation, people still, peoples in Malaysia, still consider eating sea turtle eggs is a cultural tradition, one that's hard to change. And You'll be surprised if you go to Peninsula, Malaysia, you can still see people selling turtle eggs openly in the market. This photo is it from, I, I took this from Pasar Payang in Terengganu. And um, why? Because until now, there is no legislation to ban the commercial sales of turtle eggs in Malaysia. So in Malaysia, we have the federal law, we have the state law, and the states, they have the rights to make their own regulations. So for, ex for example, in Peninsula Malaysia, in Terengganu, they decided they don't want to ban the commercial sales of turtle eggs. And that's why, until now, they're still selling turtle eggs. And we are very fortunate, for example, in Sabah and Sarawak, 
sea turtles are fully protected. But because inconsistent law in Malaysia, we have seen that smuggling effort, sorry, smuggling activity in Sabah, Sarawak had increased in recent years because people can smuggle these eggs and sell them in Peninsula Malaysia. And other than that, sea turtles, they are also facing modern day problems. This is what I call modern day problems. Plastic pollution. So turtles underwater, they couldn't see the plastic clearly, plastic or other garbage. So they, they mistake it for the food, they mistake plastic for jellyfish. And what happened when turtles eat, eat plastic, it will cause blockage in the digestive system and eventually they die. Another modern day problem for sea turtles, they are facing threats from global climate change. As I've told you earlier, turtles, they will come back to their natal beach to lay eggs. But now, because of global climate change, sea level rise, so turtles are losing some of their nesting beaches. And because of increase in temperature, we are also predicting that more female hatchlings will be produced. So these are the problems that face by sea turtles. And for the last two decades, I've been saving sea turtles. I've done research in order to learn more about sea turtles so that I can protect them. I also conduct outreach program to educate children and public. And I do feel very fortunate to have this wonderful opportunity, thanks to, to sea turtles, that I can do something that I really like in this, in this life. And in 1998, I introduced the first sea turtle volunteer program in Malaysia. And this is to give hands-on experience to educate, give hands-on experience to public on sea turtle conservation and awareness. And I also conduct so many turtle camps, and this is to educate young children about the importance of sea turtles. And I do believe education should start from grassroots levels. So, our sea turtles is in trouble. They need our help. They need your help. And simple things in our life, the changes in our daily life, we can help sea turtles. All of us can do that. For example, we can stop, for example, stop eating turtle eggs, do not buy any product related to sea turtles, and you can change your daily life, stop single-use plastics, so stop the usage of plastic bags, plastic straw, and so on, and be proactive and be responsible. Each of us here can make a difference. Together, we can save sea turtles from extinction. On behalf of the sea turtles in Malaysia, thank you.